Okay, and uh, welcome back to another video uh, about Zabbix again. And uh, well, first of all, I wanted to thank you all of you guys who made this uh, impact to our videos by posting uh, different type of the comments, uh, clicking on those uh, like, uh, dislike and other emotion uh, buttons. Uh, also, to all of those people who subscribe to our channel, don't worry, you will see a lot of uh, content like before and also like today. Uh, regards the comments about the videos, I remember somebody asked me like, hey, is it possible to suggest some topics uh, for the upcoming Zabbix series videos? And uh, yeah, that's the answer for all of you. That's the main idea. We are trying to talk uh, with a community. And if you want to hear some videos about some specific topics, just write your suggestions or the requests in the comments, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, in all our social, social pages. And the links to them is in the description page and we'll definitely hear you. I cannot promise that we will make the video about your topics uh, in the next week, but sooner or later it will definitely happen. So, uh, shortly about the previous videos, we talked about how you can install the Zabbix, uh, the server and the proxy from RPM packages on the clean CentOS 7.6 machine without a firewall, without an SL Linux. And I still believe that it is one of the most popular ways how uh, nowadays the Zabbix users install the Zabbix in their environments for the testing purposes or for a production monitoring reason. But yes, many of you told like, uh, hey, come on, the packages, who does that? Who still you know, installs something? like uh, it's the time for containers for the dockers and uh, well you've asked for it so let's talk a little bit uh, again repeat a little bit because uh, we will talk about official Zabbix docker images we will not talk about the docker functionality the logic of the docker architecture we'll talk only about the stuff that is related to the Zabbix so let's get to my computer, what do I have on the screen? Uh, I have a link for a Docker documentation. If you are already familiar with this, uh, most likely you won't have to read it. If you never had a hands-on on a Docker, but uh, most likely you heard about it uh, quite a lot, then I really do suggest you read the documentation. It is pretty easy to read. Uh, there is also always some example in the background, so you can actually write your own uh, Docker file, uh, create your own image and start your own service uh, for the training purposes. So this will help you to understand what we'll be talking about in this video. Then I have also, let's open this one, the GitHub. Uh, repository of our Docker images for the Zabbix, which is maintained by the Zabbix company, by the Zabbix employee, where you can find uh, all of the Docker files for three operating systems that we currently support, which is Alpen, uh, CentOS, and Ubuntu. And uh, for the database backends, it is MySQL and PostgreSQL. You will also find the uh, Docker Compose files, which is uh, basically just an instruction. What do we want to do? Uh, which containers do we want to run? And uh, long story short, each of these Compose files contains the information, the commands to start a uh, Zabbix server. You can choose MySQL or a Postgres uh, operating system. Then a proxy with a SQLite database support, a proxy with a MySQL database, database support, Apache running on uh, default port 80 and Nginx running on the port 8080. So all the bunch, uh, also I forgot a Zabbix Java gateway, so plus the SNMP traps. So in the end you can have a full stack of uh, Zabbix components up and running, which, which will be a lot easier for the testing and uh, could be used even for the production use. Why Docker? Because it's easier. Uh, installation from the packages, it does takes like five minutes. I believe if you don't comment on the steps, what you're doing, it will take you around five minutes, uh, excluding the installation of the virtual machine itself. With the Docker, it will be like 
if uh, the first time when let's say you were planning to start it it will first of all download all the required stuff and that download depends on your internet connection might take some time the second time when you already have those images stored locally those will be just a couple of the seconds so what do else i have installation from the containers zabbix official documentation remember uh, 4.0 version installation from the packages from the sources which is also another way how you can get zabbix up and running and also from the containers so here you will find uh, explanation and description about all the docker related stuff in terms of the zabbix uh, usage because you will have to change especially for the production and also for the development uh, environment if you want to set up something you will have to change uh, environment files and uh, the variables Th those would be basically the parameters in the zabbix let's say server or the agent configuration files like the mysql user the database server port uh, mysql password database and all of that stuff you'll also see that a bit later in the actual CLI also the example commands how you can run the containers may it be the Zabbix server uh, with a MySQL support and the host uh, database name user password uh, the Java gateway also create a link expose the ports to which your Zabbix server will be listening an example for the Zabbix web installation with nginx support like uh, when you are installing Zabbix from the packages, we have Apache support available in our official RPMs. If you want to configure Nginx, you need to install it separately, do all the configuration with the PHP FPM. Uh, it does take some time. Instead, you can just type docker run uh, Zabbix web Nginx with a MySQL support, specify all the required database parameters, the ports that you will expose, and that's it. You have a uh, Nginx front end up and running so a, a bit more of examples and then uh, information about the docker compose so docker compose is instructions already told about it uh, how what to do with our containers and what we will get in the result then what i else have uh, on my virtual machine all of that stuff that we'll be using is already installed i won't be doing a clean install simply because uh, well, I want to save some time. Um, the cloning of the GitHub repository, installation of the Docker, uh, Docker Compose, pulling all of the images on the first in the first time, first download, it will take some time. So instead of doing that here uh, in the video, I have a commands for you. So in this page, so well, basically three commands, how to install the Docker CA, so the Docker engine itself. First of all, we need to install yum utils in which there will be a device mapper for system data and LVM2, which is a requirement. Then we need to add a custom repository of a Docker because the Docker package itself won't be fine in the, in the CentOS repository. And uh, don't forget that all of these commands are for the operating system that I have on my virtual machine. So on the CentOS, uh, if you have, let's say, a Debian, go to the Docker doc documentation, search uh, how you can install a Docker on your distribution and uh, change the commands a little bit and get it up and running. Then the second step, Docker Compose. So how to get a Compose? That's not even a package that really small executable thing that you can get up and running with just one command uh, don't forget to add execution permissions to it after the download then you need to actually there should be one additional command yum install git because it's not available by default and then you need to clone our official zabbix docker git repository so in the github and the pages the one that i have opened on my screen this one in the end in your CLI, you will have additional folder called Zabbix Docker. So let's go inside this Zabbix Docker folder, type ls. We have quite a lot of files and uh, a couple of directories. What are those files about? Docker Compose files, v2. And uh, well, those are for the older Docker Compose version. And I would say that 
normally you will not need them anymore. If you have a fresh installation, uh, you don't need them. So we will be using Docker Compose V3. And uh, what, what's the difference between these, I don't know how many, six or eight files with a V3? Uh, see, there is, first of all, the choice of operating system. Docker Compose V3, Alpen, 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 CentOS, and Ubuntu. So three choices of distribution on which you want to plan to run the container, what will be beneath it. Uh, then there is a choice of the database, which could be MySQL or a Postgres. Again, for each distribution, you have a choice of a database engine. Then there are two types, which is local and the latest. Here, the difference is pretty simple. The local means that we will be building image locally from our local Docker files, or the latest will mean that we'll be pulling it from the repository. So, directories, Java Gateway, the Zabbix Appliance, Web Nginx, Postgres SQL, Web Nginx, MySQL, Apache, MySQL, Postgres, SNMP traps, the server, proxy with the different database supports. All of those is basically explanation of our Zabbix component uh, containers. So server MySQL, inside you will find the choice of the distributions, operating system, so let's say a CentOS, and inside there will be a, a Docker entry point script in which all of the steps are described how to actually uh, download the sources, configure the database, create a database, grant uh, a privilege to some user, uh, copy the schema, import it, change the mandatory parameters. So all, basically most of the steps that we did in our previous videos uh, when we installed the Zabbix from the RPMs, except all this will be automatically. So preparing the system and uh, a lot, a lot of different things. Then what else do we have is a Docker, com Docker file, which is strictly related to the Docker itself. Yeah, read me so nothing much that we'll need here for this video. So let's go back and back again. Uh, let me type docker ps. So currently I don't have anything running and uh, let's try to start our first uh, Zabbix container with uh, docker compose and let's see how it goes. So to do that we need to execute docker slash compose minus f then the name of, uh, of the docker compose file, which will be docker compose v3. Uh, let me actually get checkout 4.0. So yeah, first of all, it's easy to install it, but it is also easy to get different versions of the Zabbix up and running. So right now we will be doing 4.0, the latest release. So docker compose minus f docker compose v3. Uh, Alpen MySQL latest .yaml file in which we have all the instructions, what we're gonna do. And in the end, we need to add up. So start a container and minus D to detach. Click enter. And some services starting the container, database data MySQL, recreating. This might actually fail right now because I haven't deleted the files uh, of my previous Docker uh, time when I started and the previous version of the Zabbix was 3.4. So not sure will this go through. Perhaps it will. Yeah, it started. So what do I have here? I have uh, Zabbix Java Gateway, SNMP Traps, the Zabbix Server, Web Apache MySQL, Web Engine Next, Proxy with SQLite, Proxy with MySQL, and uh, the Zabbix agent. All of those are started, and we can verify that by typing Docker PS. In the Docker PS, let me zoom this a little bit out so we can see that a little bit normally. Uh, first of all, we can see, I'll zoom a bit more. 
Yeah, I guess it, it, it is what it is. Uh, we see the column with the container ID and the name of the container. The command, not so important, created the status. The most important things that we see that those are healthy and uh, the health checks are for the web engines based on the curl to the local host and uh, the ports, exposed ports. So proxy uh, engine X is exposed on 8081 and it forwards to the common HTTP port. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, so Apache is just a basic 8080. So basically right now we could go to the browser. I have already IP of my virtual machine here and uh, it was not up and running so I'll try to reload. And uh, there we go. Uh, don't get scared of this, uh, like after changing the major versions from like 3.0 to 3.4 or 4.0, after the first login you need to clean the cache of the browser. So Control of 5 if you're using Chrome, not sure about other browsers. And there we go, we have a fully functional Zabbix uh, with the front end, Zabbix 405, which is the latest release. Uh, we have an agent, Zabbix server, which is disabled. Let's enable it. But actually, if we would wait for a minute or so, it would become not supported because our agent is pointed to the local host from the Zabbix server. So that's not true. We don't have agent there. Let's go back to the CLI and let's find the agent. There we go, the container, Zabbix agent Alpen. We need to copy the container ID, it will be just easier. And then type docker inspect and uh, copy paste the container ID. From the output, right in the end of the output, you will see the gateway and IP address. So IP address is the actual IP address of our agent. So copy paste it in the front end, update, and then remember we need to update the configuration cache if we wanna uh, save up a spare minute. How to do that? Like if we would run a Zabbix server minus R config cache reload, it would not work. Uh, first of all, because of typo. Second thing, because I am running it locally, but I don't have a Zabbix server running locally. It's running inside a container. So again, Docker PS, let's find the container of our Zabbix server. Zabbix server MySQL Alpin, there we go. Again, copy the container ID and type docker exec minus it, then container name and the command that you want to run, which will be zabbix underscore server minus capital R config, config cache reload. And we get a command that we used to see when we typed this one is command send successfully. So let's go back to the front end refresh the page and we see the availability green and we can actually see some latest data collected from our Zabbix agent which is stored inside a container. There we go, we start to get a data. So this was 4.05 and uh, let's think how, how complicated it will be to start let's say uh, 3.4. Let's go back to our CLI. Uh, Docker containers are up and running. We can scroll up to our Docker Compose file, not the file, but the command. Delete the ending with op minus D and type kill. It will again take a uh, second two or five, killing all the containers like the Zabbix proxy, WebNGINX, agent proxy, server, done. If we would type a Docker PS, there is, let me adjust the zoom, there are no containers running right now. If we would go back to the front end, refresh the page, nothing. The page is not accessible because nothing, uh, no web engine is running on this IP address. So, first of all, let's, let's try to run 3.4, how complicated it is. If we would be doing that with an RPM, so we would have to, uh, well, option one, delete the database or create a new one, uh, install a new binaries with the new config files, fill in the configuration files, uh, import the schema, create a user, 
some 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 amount of the time but in case with the docker let's just git check out and branch 3.4 switch it to branch 3.4 then we need to type, uh, I'm personally using uh, MC, you can do it with other utilities. I am looking on the folder Zabbix environment. This is the folder where all of the stuff described in, uh, in the Docker files is mapped locally, like the database. The database uh, data directory, it's not inside the container because that's absolutely outside of the logic of the containers. Those must be as small as possible. So the database uh, data file data directory is mapped to our local uh, CentOS 7.6 machine. And right now I have a data for, uh, for my 4.0 installation and that will not work for 3.4 and uh, the docker itself will not delete it automatically so what I need to do just uh, move move the selector to that Zabbix environment and click F9 F uh, yeah F8 there we go to delete directory yes delete it all we don't need it exit from the MC done so we already checked out the 3.4 and nothing has changed we don't need to change any configuration files just scroll up again to your docker compose same v3 alpin mysql uh, latest but instead of kill type up minus d just like we did in the first time when we installed the 4.05 so we can see that again starting the docker database uh, data mysql SNMP traps, all of those components. Almost done. Zabbix server. Proxy, proxy with a MySQL support. Proxy with a SQLite support. support. Again, uh, on the first, first start, it will take minutes more than normally because it will also have to create a database from the scratch and import a schema. So, done. We can run a docker ps again we have uh, many containers up and running the proxy proxy with sqlite web engine x uh, web apache and uh, let's try to open the browser again the ip address the front end does not match the zabbix database which means the database is being currently created in the background so again click refresh this might again take a uh, 5 10 15 seconds for the database to being created. Unable to select configuration, so the DB version is completed. The next tables. And let's click on the retry button to try again. And there we go. We see the login screen. Uh, session terminated, please re-login. We already can see that uh, the text is moved in, in some uncommon places. So the same stuff I told you, Control F5 to clean the cache. Uh, and login with the default credentials, uppercase admin, lowercase Zabbix. Again, the front end is up and running. Uh, nothing is here, like if we would go to configuration hosts, our Zabbix server host is still disabled. If we would want to get it up and running, see it's again a local host, we would again have to go to the CLI, uh, type the Docker PS, then the Docker inspect and the container ID of our uh, Zabbix agent container, which is, uh, there it is, so this one, copy paste. And we would have to pick this IP address and copy in the front end. We won't be doing that now. So you can see in the bottom, the version is 3.4.15. It was uh, 4.0 a minute ago. Okay, let's, let's kill this one. Let's do another thing. Uh, delete the ending, kill. Okay. Killing all the containers, second or two. Done, 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 done. So everything is killed. Again, we don't have anything. None of the containers is running. We try the latest release of the Zabbix 4.0. We try the latest release of Zabbix 3.4. What if, let's say, we want to run uh, not the latest release. I have uh, 
let's pretend I have some customer of mine or, or my company that is having issues in 3.4.10, which is not the oldest, but also not the newest release. And I want to test it out, but I don't want to uh, install it from the packages or from the sources because I will need that just for the testing purposes for 20 or 30 minutes. So how can I switch the versions? Again, let's go to... Uh, First of all, let's check which Docker Compose file are we running. The Docker Compose v3 Alpen MySQL latest. Let's go to the Midnight Commander and search for that file. Docker Compose v3 Alpen MySQL latest. This one. Open this file. And what do we see here? Scroll up. The version, okay image which images are we using for this container zabbix dash server dash mysql and the tag is alpen dash uh, 3.4 latest and the part latest means that it will be a latest release from 3.4 branch and if we want to uh, to start 3.4.10 then we need to replace and there is a function called replace uh, minus latest and replace to that dot 10 3 4 dot 10 yep uh, click OK and replace all of the matches there should be eight of them seven okay maybe uh, let's just check again 3 4 10 and I didn't change this one so I will do that manually 3, 4, delete the latest part, 10. And save our changes. So just like I told you, there are eight changes to override in total. Save that, exit. After we done that, we don't need to run any git checkout 3, 4, 10, something like that. We just need to start uh, again, the docker compose minus f docker compose v3 help in my SQL latest instead of kill just up minus d. This will again take a second or two, so we can already see that starting Zabbix docker my SQL server, uh, Zabbix server, SNMP trap support, all of that stuff. So, again, have to wait a little bit. And we're done. And there we go. So the login screen, again, control of five to clean the cache, uh, uppercase admin, lowercase Zabbix as a password, and uh, clean Zabbix installation, no hosts uh, except the Zabbix server, which is disabled. And in the bottom, you can see the version is 3.10. So it's still 3.3. branch, but it's not the latest minor release, it's 3.10. 3.4.10 yes exactly and uh, well you can change these minor versions and major versions on the fly like if you want to do something else uh, again run uh, not uh, up minus d but kill uh, do the git checkout to the branch that you want to start it might be 3.0 3.2 3.4 4.0 or it is also possible to select a trunk branch and uh, build uh, the nightly build of the Zabbix development. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, some useful commands. So docker ps, uh, let's take a container ID. First of all, how to get the logs. Let's say we configured something in the Zabbix server, it's not running and we want to check the logs. Uh, don't try to find something in the usual location of our log Zabbix. Remember, that's the virtual machine, but the Zabbix right now is spinning in the container. And to check the logs, we need to type docker logs and the container ID for which you want to see that. So the Zabbix server, this one, uh, copy paste. There we go, we can see the logs. Cannot uh, parse the proxy data from active proxy and two IPs. Because remember, we have two proxies. We have a proxy with a MySQL and a proxy with a SQLite. And unable to process it because we have a clean database. And uh, in the administration proxies, we don't have anything. 
it's empty. Another helpful commands are, let's say I want to, uh, I already previously showed like if I want to reload a configuration cache, I can do that by typing the docker space exec minus id uh, the container id and the actual command or we can run bin bash and we're inside the container right now i am inside the container and i can see just a couple of directories because remember following the the docker the container logic that everything must be as uh, small and light as possible. So here you will find only things that were uh, exactly used by the Zabbix. Uh, yeah, the config files, you can run from here, the Zabbix server, capital R, config, cache, reload, like that. And then if you want to exit from the container, type exit, done. We're again in our virtual machine. Uh, what else, the environment, we could call them variables, I guess. Uh, these that start with a dot. Let's say that environment agent. Uh, let's try to edit it. What's inside? The Zabbix source IP, debug level, server host, passive, allow, true or false, the host name, metadata. You might see them as uh, familiar because all of those are the configuration par parameters from the regular Zabbix agent config file. And uh, here the only thing different is the naming. So let's say if I want to use uh, metadata because my, my Docker container agent will be performing auto registration to my server or the proxy, then I need to delete a hash, well, basically uncomment and uh, add the actual metadata and then reload the container for it to actually take place. And the same applies for Let's, let's quit this without saving. The same applies for uh, the Zabbix server, the proxies. Uh, there we go for the server. Start timers, uh, start pingers, all of the parameters that you would normally see in the Etsy Zabbix, uh, Zabbix underscore server dot conf. So if you need to change something, uncommon the value and change the parameter. After what, don't forget to reload the container itself. What else? Uh, I've myself seen in a couple places where people are telling like, uh, well, basically asking the Zabbix to provide a Docker compose files for some more like real life scenarios, basically. Well, you see this one, it provides uh, two front ends, listening on the two ports. It provides two proxies, uh, MySQL uh, database. What else? Uh, the Zabbix server and also the Zabbix agent. And uh, you might ask like, well, this is cool, but I don't need all of that. I need just a server, MySQL database, front end and agent. Just a typical installation of the Zabbix. But yes, uh, you can ask that for the Zabbix and then maybe, maybe we should do that, but uh, you can actually do that on your own pretty easily. So how we can do that, I already have an example here. Uh, Docker Compose, first of all, v3 alpen MySQL latest kill. I'm not going to be using it. Uh, I forgot minus F. Minus F, kill all the containers. Then I will reset all the changes that I just did. Git reset hard uh, and uh, git checkout to the trunk, trunk branch. And let's open the one that we were just trying to start, this uh, Docker Compose file. Let's open it just with the text redactor with the Wim. And uh, well, basically what's inside here, it's not required to go through all of the lines. Let's talk about the services. We can see the Zabbix server. So this part is responsible for the Zabbix server, how it will be started, what resources it has in terms of the CPU, uh, memory, environment file, the users, all of the stuff for the server. Labels, then another one, Zabbix proxy SQLite. Let's go below again, the ports, uh, some volumes, uh, resources, basically the same stuff. The next one, Zabbix Proxy MySQL. So long story short, if you don't need 
something of that, if you don't need those proxies, then just delete that part uh, from the YAML file. And that what I have here in my Docker Compose v3 new. Uh, that's the same official Docker Compose file. I've just deleted the things that I don't need. I have a Zabbix server here. I have a Zabbix frontend somewhere with an Nginx. There we go. Zabbix web Nginx MySQL. And uh, what else? Zabbix agent. And MySQL, I also made a small change. By default, there is a MySQL 5.7, but uh, currently the latest release is MySQL 8.0. So I've changed the image. Uh, basically, before my changes, it looked like that. So, well, it's nothing. It's absolutely not complicated. Just change the version number from 5.7 to 8.0. Uh, small note, uh, MySQL 8.0 changed the default authentication plugin usage, which is not a native password anymore. So if you would change only this part, MySQL 8.0, you would not be able to import the schema from the Zabbix server container. And to do that, it is also required to add this part. In the command, the line below the MySQL image version, uh, dash dash default authentication plugin, MySQL native password. Then it will work. Then you will be able to use uh, uh, MySQL 8.0. Let's, let's try it. I will quit. Uh, remember that we need to delete Zabbix environment, which currently has uh, the database from 3.4. Delete it. Then we need to exit the midnight commander. And uh, again, docker compose minus f, docker compose v3, new yaml op minus d. This will take like, uh, again, a little bit longer than previously because uh, we're again creating a database from the scratch. So starting the Zabbix docker, uh, db data mysql done, uh, a bit faster because I don't have uh, proxies, I don't have a gateway, and uh, I don't remember about the traps. I do have a traps. So Nginx, uh, the default port, Docker, and a MySQL server 8.0. Let's, right now, while database is creating, Docker exec minus it and uh, jump inside a MySQL 8.0 container and run, uh, forgot, bin bash and run mysql minus v. So you can indeed see that this is uh, 8015 and we can actually try to log in inside the database with a user Zabbix and password Zabbix which is defined uh, somewhere in those uh, environment variable files and uh, we can see the database Zabbix, use Zabbix, show tables and yes so the database is created currently we can go exit, exit from the container Go to my browser, uh, reload the page, control F5, configuration is still not there. Uh, what else we can do? So Docker PS, you can see that I don't have uh, anything unwanted here. I deleted the proxy and the Java gateway. And uh, you can, let's say, instead of Nginx, you could use an Apache and delete an Nginx. Still not there. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, admin, lowercase Zabbix. We're again inside a Zabbix. 4.2.0, release candidate 2, which, is, uh, which was released uh, today when we are shooting this video. So feel free to test it. And, uh, well, that's about it that I wanted to talk today in this video. Um, Comparing from the previous ones, I guess this one was uh, twice longer and the topic is also a bit more complicated than just uh, installation uh, from the packages and honestly saying we've skipped a lot. We really just touched a little bit of uh, Docker philosophy and uh, how all of that works in terms of the Zabbix. But, uh, yeah, I guess it's enough for today. Uh, just like before, Click those like buttons, uh, post your feedback, comments, uh, suggest any further topics. And uh, don't forget that this is not the only social media channel of the Zabbix uh, company and a product. So also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, 
Facebook, I guess those would be the, the biggest ones uh, in the perspective of the Zabbix. Um, that's about it from my side today and uh, see you later in the next videos. Goodbye.